So once it's uh, all calibrated, you have all different kinds of tools. There's, um, I always show people the, the basics first and then we go from there. So in other words, you'll see on the right hand side it says document gallery properties. If you hit this little button here, it brings it over to this side. So you can be on either side and you can use it. Um, there's all kinds of cool features and tools. Once it's up and running, this becomes interactive also in the sense that um, you don't have to go through the trouble of changing the color through the bottom you can change the color of your pen through the side point here. This up here always tells you where you're at. So like right now I'm on pen. So wherever I touch on the screen, it's going to be that way. But if I want to change it, I can just go like this. And now I have a different color. So I can just automatically float through the colors. Uh, if you don't want to do pen, you have to switch over to select. And then it acts more as a mouse. So I can highlight this, okay, I can go into the menu, Oops. and then I can do a couple things. I can tell it that I want it to change to the text from my handwriting. I can select this again, and this is a really cool feature. You can, if you were working on um, a program or you're having everybody and you don't know what a word means all of a sudden and you wanted to look up a word, you can tell it to, and it'll go directly to either Wikipedia or Google, and go to your Word. And then you can create hyperlinks, you can look up information, you can do whatever you want to do from there. Um, all right. Um, some other things that you can do are, uh, you can erase it. So if you hit eraser, it's just going to erase it. It won't erase that now because that is, uh, once you convert it over to text, it's like an embedded image. So there's other ways that you can erase it and get rid of it if you wanted to. You can change the size of your eraser. So all you do is tap on the bottom, and now my eraser is just a small point instead of a bigger point. Uh, there's all kinds of cool features that you can do. For example, you can go in here, and if you want to make shapes, now I'm back to anything that I do uh, would turn into the so size of the shape that I created. So if I wanted to do a triangle, then however I take it is now going to be a triangle. Okay. Um, you can also do fills. So I can fill different colors. I can. Um, one of the things that I like to use is um, the screen capture, or I'm sorry, not screen captures, uh, spotlight. When I would um, teach and had my notes or whatever I wanted on the board and you only want somebody to see a certain thing at a certain time, then you can either go a square or a circle, okay? Um, so if you only wanted to highlight a certain portion from behind there, you can do that. You can change the size of it to be either bigger or smaller. And if you wanted to magnify what was behind so that everybody could see it, you can go as high as three-point magnification, okay, and it'll blow up whatever you're showing behind there. And if you wanted to have it in a circular format, you can go circular instead of the square. So all different kinds of things you can do with that. And then the brightness just changes how much you can see behind the screen. Um, so those are some cool uh, features. The other things in there are uh, screen capture. I can go to a web page um, and you can do it so you can shrink up your page. And so we've had it where we have this on one side and then the web page on the other. And then the screen capture feature would allow you to do one of a couple things. You can capture the whole page and put it on the background. You can capture just an individual piece. And there's even a writing tool where I could circle around something. And we practice like with a face. And you could put the face onto a body and something else. So it's really cool. Uh, you can create additional documents. So um, ways to do that. And you can move this wherever you want it to go, if you want it to be over on this side instead, so this can go wherever you want it to go. 
Um, to add extra documents is really easy. You can either go through there um, or you can go with the, the tabs on here. So now I have more pages. Um, and if just to prove that there's pages, things on the page, you can pull up the keyboard and you can type on the screen. And then if you pull up the keyboard in advance before you go into a web page, this keyboard will also work through the web page so that you don't have to go back to a regular keyboard if you didn't want to and you wanted to do it all on the screen. So you could type, um, and then I'll close out of this. Okay. And I just did that because I wanted to prove that there's something on the page. And then I can go to another page. And so I've created another page. So now if I wanted to look at all my pages so I could toggle back and forth, I can hit the pages and then I can go back and forth between the different pages and show what I wanted to show. One feature that we've been playing with uh, and we've been really enjoying, uh, a couple people that have gotten that far to, is uh, in tools, multi-input, we can go up to three people that could interactively be using the board at the same time. So you could have a doc, and we practice this. We've had a document where we've had it in each of the sections. So these two are different pages, basically within the same page. So you could write something on this page, okay? And then you could write something on this page, okay? Then you get out of it, okay? And let me sorry. Now I have them both on the same page, even though I had them originally on two different pages. And you could merge, like say you had people brainstorming ideas, and then you wanted to take all the different ideas. You could brainstorm them um, onto a singular document. So that's a, a quickie tutorial. Um, is Jacob here yet?